Hi, I'm Jeremy Starks. And I'm Dave Miller. And we're first hunters, but we're also biologists. Whitetail 101 is a series that will take you along an entire season, and we're going to discuss topics that are both relevant to the beginner as well as the seasoned hunter. Using the knowledge that we've gained in the field, we'll use science to help you increase your odds. During this first episode, we'll be going over late season scouting. And we've recently gained access to a new piece of property. And we all know how daunting or overwhelming it can be to learn a new track to land. It's early March 2018, and we're going to take you along our first scouting trip. Now the first step to us is to learn the property with aerial maps or photography. We're going to determine areas that we're not likely going to scout, and also a starting point. Tomorrow we're going to come back, we're going to take you along as we read the sign, and how that will apply to next hunting season. Today we're going to be talking about some of the things that we look for when post-season or late-season scouting. And we've come across a fresh scrape. Dave, tell us why deer use a, a scrape this time of year. You know, Jeremy, a lot of people have the misconception, and I had it for the longest time, that, that scrapes are only made during the rut or the fall of the year, when in reality, scrapes are a communication tool used by deer throughout the season. Exactly. Does will communicate with fawns, yep. bucks looking to form a bachelor group with other bucks we use these scrapes as Absolutely. well and this time of the year you know when you find this it's a good indicator that this may be a great place to start looking for next year's late season archery season so. yeah and if you look at this you see this fresh licking branch you look down here Jeremy you can see fresh tracks yeah, in the scrape. used this recently you know within the last few days they've been in here using this scrape so you know, we're going to come back in here, we're going to hang some cameras. It's the first time we've been on this property, so it's a great way to start looking for your scouting areas, do an inventory on your deer herd. Let's go see if we can find some more. Let's do it. nutrition changes with the season. What they require in late winter is completely different than October or even November. So locating food sources post-season is a great way to plan for next year's late season. This area has a high concentration of greenbrier, sassafras, and elm, which are all great food sources through the winter months. Dave, tell us a little bit about why this greenbrier is so important for deer. Greenbrier is a great nutritional food source. It's elevated when the snow falls, it's still there for the deer to feed on, even during that time of year. This area has a lot of green briar. We're gonna probably put some mineral licks in this area, a great place for cameras, and start planning already for next year's season. Dave right here is a prime example of what we're looking for when we're postseason scouting. We've come across this point, we found a lot of beds. And tell us a little bit about why you think we can tell the difference between a buck bedding area and a doe or a doe bedding with fawns. This is a perfect example of what I would consider where a buck would position himself due to the fact that he has a great backdrop up against his back, but he also has an excellent vantage point looking over the hill where he can see things coming and, and stay away from danger. Exactly. We'll, we'll look for these areas now because we don't want to be in here in early season where we could possibly run that buck out of the area. So late season, post season, a great time to locate those bedding areas and remember that for next archery season. Now Dave, we've located a bedding area on the end of the point. We've got a great feeding area behind us. The deer are using this as a transition area, this old logging road. So late season, post season is a great time to find our tree stand location for next hunting season. So what do you look for when you're trying to, to find a place to put your stand? You know, as far as a tree goes, what I try to find is a tree that it comes up and it branches and forks to break out your outline and also try to find a tree at least the diameter of the width of your shoulders. And That's that a great way, idea. That way you're not sticking out and, you know, really standing out. Yeah, not putting your stand where it's really easily outlined. You're not just on the side of a tree. Try to break your body up in those limbs or behind the tree and actually look around the tree. I do that shot too. Often. Oh, yeah. But what we try to look for, you know, 
we're late season. So we're looking for trees, there's no foliage mm -hmm. that we can really hide. So we're not going to use this same area early season. You know, when there's a lot of foliage, that same, same step location probably won't work. Exactly, that's true, that's true. And this is the time of year, the best time to get out when the foliage is off so that you can really pick out those places. Exactly, so let's try to find a tree and see what we can put together. Dave, we've come along this creek bottom and there's a lot of rubs in the area. But just like scrapes, this information can often be misleading. Very true. You know, it's misinterpreted. You know, oftentimes we think we see this rub line, oh, this is a great place to set a stand. Early season, a little different. What's your opinion on it? I definitely agree. In early season, you can find those rub lines coming off of a food source or something, and that can be a good place to start to pattern deer. But as the season progresses, very misleading. Yeah, often it can be done at night. And it's an area to start. You can start looking in that area, putting some trail cameras out. But again, a lot of times this is misleading information when you see these rub lines. So what else are we going to look for in this type of area where we do find these rubs that would lead us to more of a bedding or feeding area? Yeah, that's, that's the key to these. If you find these, sometimes that can be the, the sign marker as a deer is transitioning from its bedding to feeding. Right. So that's where it can come into play. Exactly. So just a bit of information that completes the puzzle. It's just one part of what we're looking for out here on doing our postseason or, or late season scouting. So yeah. we're going to keep walking along this bottom mm -hmm. and just try to find, get an accurate count of, of what type of activity we have in here and see if there are any bedding areas directly off of this creek. Yep. Now that we've spent a couple of days scouting a new property in late season, we're going to take the information that we collect on our mapping software for the phone and transfer it to the computer. Now, why exactly are we doing this? You know, taking the information, transferring it over really helps you see the big picture, putting your bedding, your feeding areas, and seeing the transition between the two just helps you get a good feel for how the deer travel. Exactly. It's a great way to use technology to help you with hunting. Now, you've seen how we break down late season or post season scouting. We hope you can tune in to Whitetail 101 all season and we'll take you along our approach leading up to next hunting season. So thanks for watching. Tune in next week.